thanks to the General Thoracic Surgical Club for um, allowing me to come here and present our uh, EBUS data uh, from Liverpool. That's in England. Um, <laughs> we've got a very similar meeting in the UK called the Thoracic Forum, which is run over uh, a night and a day, which is mainly a social event. Um, and a bit of scientific content and politics about um, th the thoracic surgery world, but um, probably a bit more drinking than you do because it's, um, it's wet and cold in England. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a, a title of my talk, looking at um, the role of EBUS in the diagnosis of isolated mediastinal lymphadenopathy. Um, just one disclosure, I've just come back from a VAT spinning fellowship in Hong Kong, which I got some funding from uh, uh, Ethicon, uh, it certainly wasn't the, the Hyatt Five Star. It was a hospital accommodation with a bed, which just wasn't long enough. Uh, to set the scene, um, we started our EBA service back in uh, June 2009. And we know it's a minimally uh, invasive recognized alternative to media stinoscopy, particularly good in lung cancer. And we want to look at the role of EBUS to diagnose isolated media stinal lymphadenopathy, including lymphoma. We've got very good uh, uh, database. Um, we looked at our uh, EBUS database from uh, June 2009 to May 2011 so that we can get the, the follow-up period to look at these patients. And we also prospectively collect all our thoracic surgery database and we can link that in with uh, patients who would come to surgery uh, for staging. And we also look at the case notes of, of these patients that we've followed up, um, including CT imaging, and that, we did that for a period of about six to 29 months. Um, Dr. Rice um, should have showed the, the EBUS um, uh, scope yesterday. We've got a similar system. It's a curvilinear scope. We have, we've got an Olympus set. And we tend to do most of our EBUS procedures on a conscious sedation using midazolam. And we tend to reserve uh, general anesthetic for patients with particularly small nose or biopsy in uh, more than two lymph node stations or they had a previous intolerance to um, uh, sedation uh, with flexible bronchoscopy. Um, the, the needle we used for uh, the transbronchial needle aspiration, initially we, we had a 22-gauge needle, and that works very well for lung cancer. And we've now got a 21-gauge needle, which we tend to use more frequently in the setting of uh, isolated mediastinal lymphadenopathy, because we found that we can get some quite good core specimens with that. And we tend to aspirate each lymph node on at least three occasions, and we tend to use sort of um, uh, thin prep and uh, cell block analysis. We do not actually have an on-site uh, cytology service. Um, there are 474 patients who had EBUS in that period from, from June to May, um, and 145 of these were suitable for inclusion as there was no underlying lung cancer diagnosis. Um, the majority of these patients were able to have the procedure done under conscious sedation. We used a general anesthetic in 26 patients, that's just about 18%. We did not report any complications. And we were able to get uh, adequate lymphoid tissue in 136 of these 145 patients, about 93.8%. And uh, we were able to get a pathological diagnosis in 83 out of these 136 patients. If you look at the pathologies we, we got, uh, a lot of sarcoid, uh, 58, uh, 8 TB, a um, couple cysts and three granulomas, and one each of uh, histoplasma, prostate, CA, uh, adenosia breast, and we also diagnose uh, a, a B cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia. But interestingly, we got uh, seven lymphoma diagnoses as well. If we look at the lymphoma diagnosis, uh, we had one Hodgkin's. Um, however, the uh, pathologist wouldn't commit himself to that completely, so they asked for more tissue, and we did a mediastinoscopy, which did, did confirm um, the diagnosis of Hodgkin's. Um, three non-Hodgkin's lymphomas, uh, one B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and two B-cell lymphomas. We got a, ben and a benign diagnosis in uh, 53 out of these 136 patients. 18 of these patients went on to have surgical uh, staging, and um, this was mainly mediastinoscopy. Um, in one patient, we did a VAT, so we took a lung biopsy and also a lymph node, which came back as sarcoid. And in one patient, we took an axillary node out. Um, but there were 11 uh, confirmed benign diagnoses, and there were seven false negatives, um, uh, three for lymphoma, and uh, four for sarcoid. So the other 35 patients, we wanted to follow these up to make sure these were truly uh, benign diagnoses. 
we were able to we were able to follow up 34 of these patients quite well. Uh, the patient we couldn't follow up was out of our, our region. Um, there was one false negative for TB. And the other 33 patients were seen in the clinic. We liaised with the cancer specialists from the other hospitals and looked at the CT imaging, which we can have access to from um, um, remotely from, from Liverpool. And, um, and of these 33 patients, they, certainly on CT and sort of clinical follow-up, they, they had stable or, or resolving uh, mediastinal lymphadenopathy. Um, I must say, however, there were two deaths reported in this uh, benign group of patients we were following up. Uh, in one patient, the mediastinal adenopathy had largely resolved on CT. I do not have the cause of death for this patient because of the, um, the way we track these through the national tracking system. But there was another patient who had stable disease at a year of follow-up, and that um, did find a cause of death for this from, through the family practitioner, and this was for... Um, Cause of death reported as um, bronchopneumonia, secondary pulmonary fibrosis. So I do think um, the the benign diagnosis are truly benign uh, cases. And, and just to summarise our sort of sensitivities and specificities for uh, lymphoma in this group of patients, the sensitivity of 70% and the specificity of 100. Uh, to diagnose sarcoid, 93.5% uh, uh, sensitivity and 100% specificity. And for diagnosing isolated mediastinal lymphadenopathy as a whole, um, a sensitivity of 91.2%, a specificity of 100%. So we can come up with um, some conclusions that EBUS is a safe and effective alternative to mediastinoscopy in the diagnosis of isolated mediastinal, mediastinal lymphadenopathy, including lymphoma. Um, there's a small number of patients with lymphoma in this study, so we'd advocate um, uh, surgical staging if lymphoma is suspected. Uh, we think it's more cost-effective uh, compared to mediastinoscopy in that we tend to do most of these on a conscious sedation in the bronchoscopy room. Um, there's less, less of a staffing ratio in the bronchoscopy room as well. Uh, we're just trying to work out the exact tariffs for this um, because there's a sort of length of stay implication for the mediastinoscopies as well, but we know overall there's a cost-benefit. Um, just a couple of limitations. Um, we, some of the patients with benign diagnosis uh, did not un undergo surgical staging, so we're relying on the follow-up data with CT. It's a very mixed group of patients with isolated mediastinal lymphadenopathy, unlike lung cancer, when a, a lot of these may come on to surgical resection, and it can truly confirm the, the true uh, negative result. Yeah, thank you, and any questions? Thank you.